it's great weather now and uh, I was just thinking, you know, I should go out for a ride. It's been a long time anyway. And I thought that maybe if I'm going to be doing a ride, uh, let's talk about something interesting, maybe, right? You know, something like this. This was the uh, old Hog magazine, and I'm not going to be talking about the old Hog magazine. This is the Enthusiast magazine, they call it now. And look at the front cover. That's my boys, Hugh McGregor and Charlie Bowman. And uh, that's the topic for today. I'm going to be talking about uh, these guys and uh, what they were doing on the road. So I'm here now uh, on my bike and I thought this is the best way to talk about this particular series. So why don't we just take this on the road? Hello everyone, I'm Fletch and today uh, it's a beautiful day, uh, although it did uh, forecast for some cloudy skies, but uh, let's see how it goes, right? So I'm going to talk about uh, The Long Way Up, which is a series by uh, Charlie Bowman and uh, Ewan McGregor, and uh, it's all about the various trips that they've done uh, across the world, uh, and of course the latest one in 2019. Uh, which we released in 2020, uh, was about their trip from South America to uh, Los Angeles. So the Long Way series was started with uh, Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor way back in 2004. Uh, their first trip was from England through Europe all the way through Russia and ending up in New York in the United States. Now, I thought that was a great adventure to do and I think it inspired a lot of people. Uh, their bike of choice was the, uh, the GS1150, I believe, uh, which was a good bike, right? Then I mean, if you watch the entire series, you realize that they go through a lot. The trials and tribulations of riding through not just tarmac, but across gravel and sand and bad roads and stuff. And also, uh, in 2007, they decided to do it again. This time they called it the long way down. And again, it's from England to the tip of uh, Africa and all the way down to South Africa. Uh, again, I can't remember how long it took them, but again, their bike of choice was uh, the BMW, but this time the uh, the GS uh, 1200 or the 1200. As we all know, the, 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 the adventure bike, the BMWs that they produce, were meant to take just about any kind of terrain. And they put this metal, right? I think that's the one I was trying to use. And they put the metal uh, in the sense that it was able to perform the way it's supposed to. And then they decided to do something a little different in 2019, and it was called the long way, the long way up. The vehicle of choice, because they wanted to do something a little different. Uh, they wanted to do it on an electric bike. And they wanted to, you know, take care of Gaia, you know, to take care of the earth, take, you know, do something for the next generation. So for, I think it's very good, right? I think it's a good thing to do. Uh, and I think that's the idea of uh, this particular review because here we're talking about the Harley Davidson live wire. That's right, the electric bike. And uh, my review will be about the series in the beginning, of course. The, the trip for the long way up was supposed to be from uh, South America all the way to Los Angeles. Uh, and the idea was to use this electric bike and to be able to see how well it does, well it does and how well it performs uh, on all kinds of terrain. And of course, uh, it's a good showcase for Harley Davidson. Now the curvy 
There are a couple of caveats for this particular uh, this particular series. Uh, one of which, of course, is the fact that it's uh, an electric bike, uh, and they decided to go with a company called Rivian for their model vehicles, right? Which were also uh, electric cars. I'm not going to talk too much about them, except to say that uh, part of the caveat is that um, Rivian promised that they would, knowing the route as best as they can, set up the infrastructure for charging throughout their trip. Um, for the most part, it was successful. Uh, but in the end, uh, they had to depend on the kindness of people and an electrical outlet, which I thought was interesting. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a minute. So the other caveat was that, number one, this was a prototype for the live wire. Uh, it hasn't gone on the shelves yet when they started the show in early 2019, pre-COVID, of course. Uh, the idea was to make it to uh, Los Angeles for Thanksgiving or, or Christmas, I'm not sure which. And basically, Harley-Davidson did a few things to the bike to make sure that, number one, uh, it was roadworthy and able to handle the rigors of the the bad roads and so forth. So what they did was they modified the bike. When I say modified the bike, meaning that they've added suspensions, they've added uh, a higher fork to lift the bike up a little higher. You know, they had uh, those underbelly pans to protect uh, the uh, undercarriage. And of course, they changed the tires to uh, something that was um, that could handle off-road, right? Uh, an adventure bike uh, configuration. So, the bike was not your typical off-the-shelf uh, live wire. Um, as you all know, for the most part, when we travel, it's tarmac like this, right? Uh, and fairly good roads, uh, although I've been through some pretty roads which were pretty awful. But, um, invariably, most of the road tires should be able to handle it, but they decided to, to add uh, the uh, adventure tour bike, uh, sorry, the adventure tour tire to be able to um, handle the, the, the worst roads ever. For the most part, uh, the series is basically like a documentary, of course. You know, they, they document the travels and, and the trials and tribulations on the bike. Then, of course, they'll stop off and talk about charity stuff uh, with UNICEF and, and everything else, which is also a good thing. Um, it's typical of any documentary. They would have their own... Uh, each of them will be talking about their own trials and tribulations and their own feelings about the trip. Uh, they all have their own personal cam. Uh, and of course, uh, the interesting thing is they decided to go full Harley Davidson. Uh, they have a follow motorcycle. Uh, a guy called Claudio, who is a photographer and videographer, riding uh, Harley Davidson Sportster, which, uh, if you want a little bit more on a take on, on a Sportster on a long way up, I suggest that you watch uh, Dad and Matt's uh, review. I'll put the link on the top uh, in our cards above, so you can actually have a look at John's take on that. But this will be my my. I'll be talking more about the live wire and and the feasibility of, of traveling. And I think they they did a good job of being able to you know give a showcase of how we handle or how it handles, not we how it handles on the worst terrains ever. I mean, if you watched it, and I've watched the entire series now, and I, 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 I waited till the entire series was done before I, I went about uh, doing this review of, sport, of sorts of the, of the show. And more, more importantly, it's a review on how, my, my take on the live wire and how it handled the, the entire situation. Now, the live wire, Honestly, after looking through the entire episode, especially the beginning, a couple of takeaways from it. 
we have we all know uh, for those of us who operate uh, drones and cameras and stuff for whatever reason the batteries don't do very well um, in extreme weather right so when I say extreme weather I'm talking about um, like cold winter weather uh, I'm not sure if extreme heat affects it as well but it, it, it really goes to show you know because it, 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 at one point the, uh, in the beginning of the show, it was actually dead winter when they first started in South uh, America. And I know that uh, for the most part, I think uh, the rating of the battery life uh, for for the light wire was supposed to be about 200 miles, or 250 maybe, uh, up on the lake below, or I'll give you a little description below of what the actual uh, thing is under nominal uh, circumstances. But they during winter, they could only do 120 miles, maybe 140 max, before they had to find a charging station or find a place to charge, right? Which, to me, is something to take note of, right? Uh, especially those of you in temperate countries that that experience, you know, winter and stuff. So if you want to go on long trips, you've got to plan more days than usual uh, to get to it or get to your destination or get to it and you know I, I think that's a, a major factor for me uh, in considering a electric bike or the current state of the electric bike in this case the, the live wire for Harley Davidson but I think when the weather improved they were doing uh, quite well, about 240 maybe, about 210, 200, what have you, uh, on a full charge. Now, again, for the battery, bad weather, it doesn't retain a charge. And it also seems to take a longer time to charge, based on the show, right? Because there were times when and after a full night's charge, they were still like maybe 80%, you know, and, and, and the worst part is that, that it wasn't consistent for the two bikes. They charged exactly the same time or plus minus five minutes. Uh, and, and, and what happened was that, uh, you know, one of them lost the charge faster than the other, which also turned out to be a real pain. And, and the one thing that I found, um, that would really put me off an electric bike was the fact that if you don't have a fast charger, fast chargers mean that uh, fast chargers mean, sorry, I had to say hello to that guy, uh, which we're having a street pop as well. So fast charging is basically, you know, two hours and you know, you have to spend two hours just waiting to get it fully charged before you can go on for another 200 miles or so. And that to me is already a bit of a pain. And then if you don't have one of those fast chargers, it would mean that then you would spend a minimum of eight hours getting a full charge. Now that is really crazy, right? Now, I know in the United States and in Europe and maybe Australia, uh, I'm not sure about New Zealand, but that they, they have charging stations for electrical uh, vehicles. And so you're not too worried a little bit, right, uh, about that. But um, imagine if you, were in, if you decide to take a trip and you're concerned about, you know, uh, in, in our case it's petrol, but in their case is electricity right and if you can't charge or you have to lose a day worth of riding just charging so of course you do it at night right but it will mean that you have to plan your your, your distances really carefully and decide you know where is the next one supposed to be or be at the mercy of uh, the, 
of the, the guidance of, of, of the locals, right, so to speak. So, in Asia, I mean, I, I when they first announced the live wire, I did in my multiple trips that I did across the border, I did check out uh, the electrical fast chargers that there were at petrol stations and so forth, and there were few and far between. So, to me, I would say if I was going to uh, Thailand, the border, normally in a bike like this, it would take me about nine hours, ten hours to get there in one day. Now, and that's a total of about a thousand kilometers, which is about 800, 700 miles, right? In order for me to do the same thing, I would have to make sure that I have enough uh, fast chargers along the way to be able to move by a car, right? So ultimately what will happen is that I have one fast charge and the rest are slow chargers, so it will probably take me three days instead of the usual one to get to Thailand. That uh, is still a, a tough decision for me, uh, but uh, hats off to them, they, they, they made it all the way from, from South America to the United States, uh, in Los Angeles specifically. Um, and of course, once they hit the United States, uh, charging wasn't an issue. They have a lot of fast chargers and everything else. So, um, and then of course, uh, the bike was not meant for anything but tarmac, right? Uh, at the end of the day, um, we ride on roads like this, and we hardly get stuff that's pretty bad because. Whether it was snow or gravel or sand, the number of spills that bike took was uh, heart wrenching, so to speak. Really heart wrenching. So, uh, to me, it was uh, quite tough to, to drop all the time a $30,000 motorcycle. And this is 30,000 USD, mind you, not Singapore dollars or what. And that's already a lot of money. So, you know, I'm, that's really heartbreaking to see. Uh, so, obviously, it's a bike that's meant for just regular roads, right? So, anyway, that's my take on, on, um, on, the, on the long way up and especially the live wire. If you guys have any comments, please uh, leave your comments below. Uh, and if you haven't yet, please uh, hit the subscribe button. And of course, don't forget to hit the notification bell to let you know when the next video will be out. So, uh, my name is Fletch, and thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have a good trip and a safe ride.